We previously looked at how we could calculate the change in our property for mixing, like delta V of mixing, or the total volume from the partial molar properties. But we don't always know the partial molar properties. And so what we want to talk about today is how to find the partial molar properties from the total properties. Because in reality, the total property, like the total volume of the system, is a lot easier to measure than the partial molar volume, right? So as a reminder, and we'll, we'll sort of switch back and forth here between V and G and our generic V, but if we want to find delta V of mixing, this is relatively easy. We just measure the volume of the solution and we subtract off the volume of the pure components. So if we know delta V of mixing or delta V of the solution as a function of composition, so as a function of the composition of the system, then we can find partial molar properties also as a function of composition because these do in fact vary with composition. Okay, so let's take a look at how we, this full derivation can be found on pages 206 through 209 in our text by de Hoff. I'm not going to go through it all the way here. In class, we will work with this a little bit to see uh, what the equation really means and to sort of learn a little shortcut for how we can do this. Okay, but we start with the fact that we know how changes in B mixing are related to the partial molar properties. And these equations essentially come from the table that we had about how mixing properties can be found from partial molar properties. Okay, so we know this. We also know this about delta B mix. Oops, we don't need a D here. So this is just the weighted uh, sum of these. Okay. We also know, though, for a binary system that x1 plus x2 must remain always at 1, and that if we have any changes in x1 or x2, that these must sum to 0. Right? Because if the composition of one of them goes up, and the composition of the other one goes down. Okay, so we take these two expressions, we combine them with the fact that we have sort of these constraints on the system, and we end up with expressions which look like this. So the change in partial molar B is equal to delta B mix, right, this is something that's easy to measure, if we just know B of the solution, plus 1 minus x2, obviously that's easy if you know the composition, right, and then basically the slope of B mix as a function of x2. And for the change in the partial molar B of component 1, we have delta B mix plus this term, where now we're subtracting x1, and then we're looking at the slope of B mix with respect to x1. Okay, so let's just look then at this equation. We can find the partial molar property from just B mixing, right? This is just a number. And then the slope of the B mix curve as a function of x2 or x1. 
okay? So this might not look obviously to you like a partial molar property, so let's just write this out so we see what it really means. So delta B2, so this is the partial molar B2 in the solution minus the partial molar B in the pure state. And really this is just then the molar B, right? Because if this is pure, then adding one more mole just adds one more mole, right, of that, of that property. So this is just the molar B here that we're looking at. Okay, so this is a way where we can find the partial molar properties just from knowing the mixing properties. And this will be something that we will come to again and again. And when we visit this in class, we will look at how we can put these equations basically to use with a graph of delta B mix versus x and find, for example, what the partial molar properties are.